Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. My name is Paul Karens. Today we'll be discussing how to retain texture within the skin and also how to use the healing tool brush. We'll begin by duplicating the background layer. It's Control J or Command J on a Mac. That way we can work in an environment that is non-destructive. So that way if you have a problem with your work and you need to start all over again you have the original background image to work with. To increase or decrease the size of your brush, you can use a shortcut key on the keyboard. It's a bracket left to go smaller, bracket right to go larger. We'll begin with this image here, which is an image I photographed for a women's fashion magazine in Europe, and was done as a cover try. I'm just going to remove some dust spots here, and I'm going to clean up some areas around the nose start off by just doing some simple stuff just to show people that are unfamiliar with this tool and what it can do. For simple blemishes it, it's very good, it's very quick. Here's a scar. Alright, um, explain something about this tool. The way it works is that it's pulling textures from both sides of the brush. So as long as the textures on both sides of the brush are similar, you don't really have to worry about the actual texture of where you did the retouching. It should always be very good. The only time you're going to run into problems is when you're dealing with areas of contrast, such as here and the hairline. Once you get closer to the hairline, the tool is going to start to get confused and doesn't know where to start pulling from. So you might see it here. Well, it's too small, so we'll work in a larger area. Okay, we'll just quickly fix the eye makeup here. Okay, I'm going to create another layer. Control J, Command J on a Mac to start fresh. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in between the eye and the nose and soften this area here so it opens up the face a bit more because for my taste it's a bit dark. Increase the size of the brush by going right bracket and then select and drag. When I release it's going to look like not very nice actually it's going to look very plasticky and muddy and the shape of the face is gone and it's just not very nice to see what happened or where you came from, just press Control or Command, and hold that button, and then press Z or Z, depending on your dialect, and you can see what the brush did. Now, instead of like starting all over again, you can continue from this area, from this part right here, by using a dialog box. Before I go into how the dialog box works, I have to explain that it's not always available to you. Um, if I had just created this layer and did nothing, and I tried to bring up the dialog box, it's not available. It's only available after you actually use the brush on some part of the photograph. So now that I've already done that, I can bring the dialog box up. The keyboard command for that is com uh, Control Shift F, and it brings up the fade dialog box. On a Mac, it would be Command Shift F. As you can see, it's at 100% right now, which is where the brush has left us. I can dial it down to zero and it's back to where it was originally. Now this fade control does not affect the actual opacity of the layer. It's only affecting the, uh, the actual brush stroke that you just made. So in that sense it's, it's, uh, it's like using opacity in a layer but you're not actually affecting the layer, you're only affecting the actual brush stroke that you just made. So that's quite a nice little feature. Um, you dial it up and then dial it back to get to a place that you are happy with. 
I find anywhere between 20 and 30 percent is usually pretty good. You don't want to go too far. You want to be able to retain the textures in the skin and you want to keep the shape of the face. All you want to do is lighten it up a little bit in order to open up the face and uh, make the image a little bit more soft. 26 is working for me here so I'll press OK. I'm going to go down to the layer here and toggle it off and on and that way you can see the difference. It's not a lot but it's enough that it softens up the image a bit and opens up the face. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Paul Cairns. You can visit my website at paulcairns.com or my blog through the photographer's eye at paulcairns.com forward slash blog. Thank you. Bye-bye.